morning. Good morning. Welcome to Trinity Lutheran in Lincoln, Nebraska. God's blessings to you all as we worship today, as we gather around his word and receive his gifts that he has to bestow upon us as well. Our order of worship for this morning is, uh, we'll start with hymn number 647, Lord Jesus Christ, the church's head. And uh, just a note as well, uh, next Sunday, uh, we will uh, have our focus on the Reformation as well as All Saints Day, um, as we remember those who've been called home to eternal life um, uh, this past year. Um, something I forgot to note in the last service is on Thursday uh, this week, normally we have a Bible study, uh, about 25, 30 people downstairs. Um, and uh, I, th I thought, well, this week, since it's uh, Reformation Day, uh, we'll have a service here up in the sanctuary. And certainly would welcome anybody who's around to, to participate in that and be part of that as well um, as we celebrate the Reformation and the grace that God uh, uh, reveals to us through his servant Martin Luther. Um, and so we praise God for that opportunity as well. So that'll be this Thursday at 10 o'clock uh, up here in the sanctuary. So you would be invited to that as well. Uh, with those thoughts in mind then, uh, we will uh, continue with our service as we share the peace of Christ with one another. And then we'll join, join in singing our opening hymn.
turn to page 260 and we stand as we begin our worship today. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. And better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. And from the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue as we join in reading together Psalm 5. Uh, this psalm uh, that speaks to God's grace, his mercy, and his salvation unto us. We join in reading together. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my groaning. Give attention to the sound of my cry, my King and my God. For to you do I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in the fear of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness. Because of my enemies, make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouth. Their inmost self is destruction. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Because of the abundance of their transgressions, cast them out for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy and spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may exalt in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover him with favor as with a shield. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. We continue as we listen as the choir sings uh, two hymns for us. Thank you. 
we uh, continue as we do read from God's Word. Thank you, choir. Uh, beautiful songs uh, that certainly point us towards uh, by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, as God's Word speaks alone. Our Old Testament reading for this morning is from Genesis chapter 4. Uh, we read verses 1 through 15, uh, this Old Testament text that I'm sure many of you remember from your Sunday school days. Um, it's one of those stories that stands out to us because of the harshness, but also because of God's response as well. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering he had no regard. So Cain was very angry and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry and why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. Cain spoke to Abel his brother. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord put a mark on Cain lest any who found him should attack him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8 and 16 through 18. Paul writes, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the reading of the gospel. For those who are able as well. From Luke chapter 18 verses 9 through 17. Jesus also told his, this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Now they were bringing even infants to him that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them to him, saying, let the children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And this is the gospel of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. We continue with the responsory on page 263. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. We remain standing as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, as we confess with all Christians on earth. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join our voices together as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. I want to share with you again those words from our gospel lesson for today from Luke uh, chapter, <clears throat> chapter 18, verses 9 through 17. Jesus speaks a parable. This is one of those parables that's kind of neat because he gives a response as to what it means, what it's driving at, and we'll we'll take a look at that closer today. In Luke chapter 18, verses 9 uh, through 17. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. And then tacked on to this parable are, uh, is this narrative that Jesus himself experienced as it's reported by Luke. Now they were bringing even infants to him that he might touch them. When the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them to him, saying, Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will not enter it. And that ends our reading and the words that we focus upon for this day. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Humble beginnings. That's usually how any good documentary starts when it's telling us about somebody who is wealthy or becomes a movie star or a sports star. They had humble beginnings, and the camera usually pans to some ramshackle house that is out in the woods. And they follow the, the, uh, the line of life for that person, that individual that it, ho- it seeks to put a spotlight on. Humble beginnings, and then we see them grow and change and get that wealth and that fame and that power. And then usually something bad happens and ETV needs to get onto the scene and report all the terrible things going on. And usually they go out in flames, those celebrities that had humble beginnings we might say humble beginnings 
and humble endings. But what is Jesus driving at in our text for today? He's got a crew in front of him, people that he wants to speak to, and he puts it in terms that they can understand because there were people who were thumping out their chests and pointing out how awesome and wonderful they were, uh, kind of like that uh, individual, that receiver that catches the touchdown, goes in the end zone and does crazy dances and gets a flag for overzealous celebrations. These are the people who are in the crosshairs of Jesus. The people who felt they were so righteous and so holy that not even God himself could compare to their righteousness. He says there was a Pharisee and a tax collector who had gone into God's house to pray. The Pharisee exposes his glory before God and says, thank you for making me such a wonderful person. All humility is lost. There's nothing like exaltation of one's own wor words towards oneself. And the whole world shudders and shakes and looks at that situation and says, you, I don't want to be a part of that. But I wonder how often we exalt ourselves, sometimes at the cost of others. Like that Pharisee, we point to our works, to our righteousness, to our holiness, to the good stuff we do, and we declare to God, you got to let me in. I'm such a wonderful being. Paul speaks about this in Philippians chapter 3. He gives God his resume. He writes it out uh, for the church in Philippi to see, and he shares these words that I share with you with them. Again, if I can find it, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, chapter 3. He writes these words. I have very much reason to boast and to have confidence in the flesh. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Under the law, blameless. You and I have a habit of looking at others and their pain and their suffering, looking at their wickedness, and we look at it and we say, I'm glad it's not me. We spend time beefing up our own resume. Like Paul says in this text, I have greater reason to have even more confidence than any of you because of who I am and what I have done. Jesus, going back to the parable, points to this Pharisee and he contrasts it with that tax collector. Now, you've got to remember in the understanding of the hearers for Jesus, the tax collector is the bad guy. That's the one that's got the black cowboy hat on, the one that the music plays when he walks in. He's kind of despicable, a lowlife. Nobody liked the tax collectors, and dare I say, we still don't like them today. The tax collector does something that is so different, so markedly different from that Pharisee. He stands in the back, kind of where all you good Lutherans are sitting. And he's downcast, he's low. He doesn't even want to look up. He wants to be a fly on the wall. And he recognizes, as Paul does in that same letter to the Philippians, that I count all that I've gained loss except in Jesus Christ, my Lord. The tax collector beats his breast, Jesus says in the parable, and says that he is unworthy. Unworthy of any grace from God. Broken by the law. 
That's what happens to us in this life as we look at who we are and we try to measure up to what God says and does. And soon, our resume cracks. Soon you and I run out of good things to say about ourselves and suddenly we're in the position of that tax collector all the way in the back recognizing that we are unworthy. There was a man who grew up as a shepherd boy who later on was anointed king. This man through a series of events was chasing after God's own heart but one day he focused on himself. And as if God had not blessed him enough, he looked and he saw a woman bathing and he said, Auga, I want that. And he sent his servants to go get her, Bathsheba. As king, he had authority. But she did not belong to him. But yet he took her anyways. Through a series of events, he tries to cover up his actions. He has ultimately her husband Uriah killed in battle. And he's doing fine and he's got his chest puffed out and he's building a, a kingdom for God and, and he looks so good on paper. But inside he is nothing but a failure. God calls him on it. God sends that prophet Nathan who comes and points the finger square at David and says, Aha, you are the man. God knows what you've been up to. Nobody else knows, but God knows. You've been caught, David. Where are you going to run? Where are you going to flee? You thought you were so good, so high and mighty. And now I'm going to reduce you. David is struck. He is broken and damaged. And he writes Psalm 50, 51. Words that belie what it is to confess sin. To recognize as that tax collector did, as Paul does. And David writes it so well in Psalm 51. As he writes about us trying to give to God, to somehow make things right again with him, he writes, For you do not delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. I'm king, I own all the flocks and all the lands, all the sheep, I could give it all to you, O God, but you have no desire for it. There is not a check so big that you and I could ever possibly write to redeem ourselves, to buy ourselves back from sin, death, Satan, and hell itself. Sacrifices and offerings are not what you desire, O oh God. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. But what are the sacrifices of God? It's a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God. You will not turn away, you will not despise. It's not in the loftiness, my friends. It's in humble beginnings and humble endings. Humble beginnings as we begin our lives as children, small and seemingly insignificant. But Jesus says, no, you are very significant. When the disciples seek to keep those little ones, those infants and those children away from him, he says, no, 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 bring them to me, for to them belongs the kingdom of God. It is in humility and in brokenness, in a contrite heart. God will not turn you away. He will not refuse you. He loves you way too much. But what about humble endings? Fast ebbs away life. Every day you and I are dying. Every day you and I are losing more skin cells than our body can produce and eventually in age we get to the point where our legs don't work like they used to where our wounds don't heal up like they once did, where our minds are not the clearest, our memories are not the best. 
we are reduced to nothingness. God gets it. He knows. Because think of the life of Jesus. Humble beginnings. Didn't have a home to be in, a manger to lie in, but a feeding trough was his home. His parents were lowly, humble beginnings for sure. And he goes throughout his life, and as he begins to teach, he declares, foxes have holes and birds have nests. Where does the Son of Man have to lay his head? He has no possessions, nothing of his own, except for the clothes on his back and the breath that he breathes. And the secret is, you and I know he's the Son of God. He owns all things, and yet he has nothing And we talk about humble endings as we see him extended on a cross. His very life taken from him. And even the clothes that he wears are taken from him. As Job remarks, into this world I was born naked and I will leave this world naked. Owning nothing. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be his name. Christ, humble beginnings, humble endings. But one thing, faithful. Faithful to his Father in heaven. That he would be God's demonstration of love for all of you in this. That while we were still sinners, like that Pharisee, trying to point at our resume and our good deeds. Christ Jesus became humble lowly and died on a cross for you. May your faith receive this good news yet again that you may package it up and place it in your hearts that it never be removed but that it would be the motivation for you and I in humility to come before God to declare our condition and to be told by him You are forgiven, and you are my beloved children, for to you belongs the kingdom of God. God's eternal peace be upon you in your lives, that we would continue to welcome others, to behold the cross, and the life everlasting that is received through it. Amen. And may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, May it guard and keep your hearts and minds in faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. We take time then to respond to God's word as we join in singing, Come unto me, ye weary, hymn number 684.
continue as we receive our tithes and our offerings to the Lord as we return to him a small portion of what he has greatly blessed us with. Uh, we take time to fill out those friendship cards that are in our pews as well. And singing verse 1 of hymn number 605, Father Welcomes. And I think there's a couple kids out there. We'll uh, have a children's message. our prayers for today. As we call upon God's name, we would turn to page 265 as we have uh, the uh, litany uh, uh, back and forth of prayers. Um, we would uh, continue to keep in our prayers uh, Judy Ray. Um, she was moved to the ICU yesterday, and I see lawns here, which is awesome. Um, we're praying for you guys. Uh, I pray that uh, the Lord would continue to grant strength and uh, healing for Judy as well, if it would be his will uh, but that he would continue to hold her in his loving arms. A variety of other individuals that I uh, would encourage you to please lift up and keep in your prayers, and uh, we will continue then with uh, our prayers to the Lord. Again, page 265. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, 
And for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those that are written in our bulletin for various needs and cares and concerns, we lift them up to you, O Lord, and pray always your will be done. Let us pray for these things unto the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for, the, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by the patience and, comfort, patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join then in praying, uh, finally, Luther's morning prayer on page 266. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. And receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor, and may he grant all of you his peace now and always. Amen. And uh, we conclude as we join in singing our final hymn, hymn number 465, Not All the Vault of Heaven Resounds, and uh, we'll stand for the last verse.
be seated. A few notes uh, regarding uh, various information throughout your bulletin for today. Um, Pastor Bill Steinbauer wanted me to pass on word to the congregation that uh, uh, both he and Lincoln Lutheran are going to be working jointly next Sunday uh, to rake uh, yards uh, throughout Lincoln. Um, so November 3rd, and uh, he was wondering if there was anybody in our congregation that needed help with that. Um, and so if you do, please let myself know or Pam Hyden know, and uh, we will contact P Pastor Bill Steinbauer. I think we've already got two from our congregation that will be utilizing that service, and so we praise God for that opportunity to serve and an opportunity to be served as well. Um, and so that'll be coming up next Sunday. Um, and then also, um, it's uh, at the front of your green sheet here. It's coming up very soon. Um, November 9th from 4 to 7 o'clock over at school, um, and it is the uh, second annual Tiger Family Tailgate and Cook-Off. Um, last year it was appetizers, this year it's uh, soups and chilies, along with breads and rolls, as well as also uh, an item that's added is um, a children's snack or a kid's snack as well. Um, and so those are the areas that you can uh, uh, cease to compete in, if you will, um, and more information on this is in back there. Uh, but then also we'll be looking to um, uh, sell tickets, uh, $10 for 15 tastes and $1 per taste, um, as well as there will be um, a silent auction available as well too. So that will be uh, uh, to help uh, support our PTL at Trinity. So if you could participate in that, we'd be very grateful uh, to you for taking that opportunity. Uh, note here as well for tickets for this event coming up um, November uh, 10th. Uh, at 5.30. Uh, tickets are $6. It's the Drew, uh, Drew Olson, uh, the uh, coach for the Concordia University's uh, women's basketball team. Uh, they uh, uh, won the NAIA national championship. And uh, so it'll be a meal as, as well as uh, a good evening for listening to Drew share with us uh, that it's not all about basketball. Um, and that should be a good uh, opportunity for us to gather together. Again, I think you can get uh, tickets back there or also in the church office throughout the week. Uh, the, today and then also November 3rd as well. A um, variety of other items in the bulletin, I would tr uh, trust you to take a look at those. Don't forget to uh, bring back your baby bottles uh, to help support the uh, Lincoln uh, Crisis Pregnancy Center uh, here in town. Uh, opportunity for us to support them through those as well. Uh, with those thoughts in mind then, thank you again to all of our music people for today. Thank you to our folks up in the balcony who serve us, as well as the people who serve us down here below as well. God's blessings to you all, and I'll be glad to greet you at the door.